This week we're going to talk about identification numbers and in particular we're going to see that many of the identification numbers that we use quite frequently have what's known as a check digit, meaning a digit in an identification number that's used for some kind of error detection. And we're going to see several examples of these check digits. Now, these check digits are included so that, for example, well, let's just look at an example first, a money order. A money order has on it an 11 digit number, which we're going to call A1 through A11. So right here we have 11 digits. We're going to call them A1 through A11 by their position. And in a money order, this last number is actually determined by the first 10. Now how is it determined? Well, A11 is what? The remainder when the sum of the first 10 is divided by 9. So I'll write that down. Is the remainder that you get when the sum of the first 10 digits is divided by 9. So if you take just a random 11 digit number, you can determine whether it makes a valid money order by looking at the first 10, adding them all together, dividing that by 9, looking at the remainder, and seeing if the 11th digit is that. Let's look at an example. Example. Um, the example is going to be find the check digit. In this case, find A11. And I'm going to write that like this. Um, 176 202 8952X. So what I mean by this number right here, 176202895 2x, is this number, or this 11-digit uh, code is going to stand for a money order number, find x. And we can find x by using this rule. So let's find x. What is the rule? The remainder when the sum of the first 10 is divided by 9. Well, let's add the first 10. Um, I'm just going to be a, use shorthand. Um, this is not mathematically precise notation. Right there, a, a capital Greek sigma in math means the word sum, S-U-M. So the sum of the first 10 is, well, let's see, 1 plus 7 is 8, plus 6 is 14, plus 2 is, uh, where was I, 16, plus another 2 is 18 plus another 8 is 26, plus another 14 is 40, plus another 2 is 42. Notice I added 14 there because, uh, well, I added it because I noticed that that made 14, and I didn't feel like adding 26 and 9, and then 5. But the sum of the first 10 is 42. Well, we take this number and divide it by 9. Uh, 42 divided by 9. Um, you could, uh, there are a couple ways of finding the, um, what's it called, the, remain, the remainder. Um, you could write 42 ninths as a mixed number, and then that would give you the remainder um, if you didn't reduce the fraction. I'm going to do it by writing out the actual long division, and I'm probably going to need a little more space above that. So right here, the sum is 42. You could imagine that this sum could add up to something like, like 70 or 80 or something. Um, but here we have 42. 9 into 42, 9 times 4 is 36. And we're left with 6. You can't put another 9 into a 6. So the remainder is 6. So that tells us, I'll just say so, x equals 6. So if you we're trying to make a counterfeit money order, and you wrote the money order number on it as 176202895255, 
that would not be a valid money order number. Given these first 10 digits, the last digit of a money order must be 6 by this computation and this rule. Um, now, another thing that these, uh, that, that identification number, well, how should I say it? Another thing that you would like to do given an identification number is determine if um, a given number is valid. That would be another method of error detection. So let's um, look at an example. What if this is typed? What happens? So example. What if you put this number on a money order? One eight six two zero two eight nine five two six is given as a money order number. So what if someone just walked up to you on the streets and said, Is this a valid money order number? Well, you can use this rule to figure out if it is. So let's add the first 10, divide by 9. Add the first 10, what do we get? So again, I'll use that shorthand notation. Sum of the first, let's spell first right, 10 is what? 1 plus 8 plus 6, 15, plus 4, 19, plus 17, 36, plus 7, 43. Sum of the first 10 is 43. Well, 9 into 43 is what? 4 with a remainder of 7. 4, 36. Subtract that, you're left with 7. So this is not a valid money order number. So I'll say as a concluding sentence, this is not a valid money order number. And why is it not a valid money order number? Given the first 10, the last digit should be 7. So I'll say the last digit should be 7. So 18620289527 is a uh, valid money order number. Now, with computers, these numbers are frequently typed on computers, and you would like the uh, identification number to detect certain errors. For example, this number right here, that, so I'm just going to change that last 6 to a 7. This number is a valid money order number by the computation we did. I changed that last 6 to a 7. This is a valid money order number. Now say you're typing it into a computer. There are a lot of errors you could make. One possible error you could make is something like this. What if you typed on your computer 168 and then the rest was right. So the first one is the actual number. You could envision yourself typing this number. And the formula, well, the, the computer would then have to check, is that a valid money order number? And it would check it by adding these first 10, dividing by 9, and looking at the remainder, and checking if it is, in fact, 7. Now, we just flip two numbers around. So if we add those first 10 numbers together, we're going to again get 43 which, when divided by 9, gives a remainder of 7. So right here, we're going to observe that if this is the right number, and you type this one, this identification number code is not going to detect this kind of error. Now, why is it not going to detect this kind of error? Because 6 plus 8 is the same as 8 plus 6. So we'll just write that as a remark. 
uh, this method, or the, the money order number doesn't detect, these are known as transposition errors, is that what they're called? Yes, transposition errors. And what we mean by that is if you flip two numbers around, this uh, number, or this uh, encoding does not detect this kind of error because 6 plus 8 is the same as 8 plus 6. The next identification number we'll look at is the number that exists on traveler's checks. Now, a traveler's check has a 10-digit number on it. We'll call it A1 through A10. Again, the last one is going to be the check digit. And the formula that gives the last number, well, it's the number in 0 through 8. So it's a whole number between 0 and 8. Could be 0, could be 8. So that A1 plus A2 all the way through A10 is divisible by 9. So it's the smallest number between 0 and 8 so that the sum of all of the numbers is divisible by 9. Now, on the money order, we were only adding up the first so many digits and not the last one. This one, we want this number to make the entire sum divisible by 9. And up, let's look at an example. Find the check number, check digit. Three. 8, 7, 5, 0, 5, 0, 5, 5, x. So right here we have a 10-digit number, and we want to find x, given these rules. Well, let's add the first nine numbers together, and then figure out what x has to be. So sum of the first nine is what? 3 plus 8 plus 7 plus... I'm going to start this side because of all those 5s. Uh, 5 plus 5 is 10, plus another 10 is 20. 8 and 7 make 15, so that's 35, plus another 3 makes 38. So the sum of the first 9 is 38. So what we need here, we need 38 plus x... That should be a t. We need 38 plus x to be divisible by 9. Because this says that the check digit is the number that makes the entire sum divisible by 9. Well, there are a few ways you could figure this out. Um, I think the easiest way is to just look at a list of the multiples of 9. So I'm going to make a list of the multiples of 9 over here. 0, I guess that's a multiple of 9, depending on some definitions. 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54, and so on. So what is the next number divisible by 9 above 38? Well, 45. So what we need is for 38 plus x to equal 45. Well, subtract 38, you get x equals 7. So x should equal 7 here. Let's look at another example. I don't like the example I wrote down on my page. It's too similar to this one, so I'm just going to make one up. Actually, let's do a, a slightly different example. Is this number a valid traveler's check number? So is 4, 3, 6, 2, 0. Let's put some zeros to make our uh, computation a little easier. 8, 5, 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8. Uh, what numbers? Let's put a 7 in there and a 1. Is this a valid traveler's check number? Is this a valid traveler's check? Well, how would we check if it's a valid traveler's check number? 
Well, we want the last number to force this to be true. So right here, we're not finding the check number. We're checking whether this is valid. This will be valid if that last number, which in this case is 1, makes this divisible by 9. Well, let's check this. Let's just add all these numbers. Sum of all numbers is what? Well, I wasn't nice to myself with the numbers I chose, so I'm just going to add them in this order. 4 plus 3 is 7, plus 6 is 13, plus 2 is 15, plus 8 is 23, plus 7 is 30, plus 6 is 36. Really? 15, 21, 36, yeah. How did I go 15, 21, 36 in this adding that I just did the second time? Well, I said 15, adding that makes 21, adding that makes 31, adding that makes 36. But Yes, this is a valid traveler's check number. That's pretty amazing. There was a 1 in 9 chance that what I chose would be a valid number. Um, that is a valid traveler's check number. So maybe I should be forging lots of traveler's checks if I can just randomly come up with a number that works. Let's do another, because I didn't want that to be valid. If I get two in a row right, then there are two in a row if I guess random numbers and they become divisible by nine, then I don't know, maybe I'm a witch or something. Or a warlock, I guess. Is this a valid traveler's check number? Six, three, five, four, two, one, seven, nine. Uh, one, two, three, uh, two, five. Is this, one, two, three, four, is this a valid traveler's check number? Well, again, we're going to add all the numbers up. This one is not, fortunately. Sum of all numbers is 9 plus 9 is 18, 19, 20. 21 plus 7 makes 28, plus 9 makes 37, plus 2 makes, where was I, 39. Plus 5 makes 44, which is not divisible by 9. So this is not a valid traveler's check number. Now right here, um, what digit would make it valid? Well, a 6 would. A 6 would make it valid, because that would then become 45. Next, we're going to look at the identification numbers on airline tickets and rental cars. The textbook said that they use the same um, what's number scheme. These identification numbers are 7 digits. So we'll call it A1 through A7. And again, the 7th digit is going to be the check digit. And they find that by dividing the first six by seven and looking at the remainder. Now, they're not adding the first six together and dividing by seven. They're just taking that six-digit number, some hundred thousands number. They divide it by seven and look at the remainder. So, example, let's find the check digit here. Find the check digit for airline ticket or rent. Um, I'm the directions I'm using in these um, examples, well, on a test or on a homework or on a worksheet, I will tell you what kind of uh, number it is. So I'm not just going to uh, write, find the check, check digit for a 10-digit number. I'm going to say, here is an airline ticket digit. Find the er, number. Find the check digit. So um, you're not going to have to memorize too much for this. I and mean, there are a lot of different rules to memorize. I don't know them. So I don't, I'm not going to expect you to know them. Unless they're written in front of you, then I would expect you to know them. Um, but just coming up with them off the top of your head might be uh, more than I think is necessary. 
So where was I? 540047X. Find the check digit, in this case, for the airline tickets. Find the check digit. Well, what do we do? We look at the first six and divide it by seven and take the remainder. That's a pain. But it's not an undoable pain. Because we can do division. 7 goes into 54, 7 times 49, subtract 5, 0, another 7 times 49, subtract 1, 0, a 1, a 7, a negative, a 3, a 4, a 6, not 6, or, uh, that should be a 4, because 7 times 4 is 28. I actually think I, I said 6 because I was thinking of the remainder uh, after the 28. Um, 4, 28, negative, 6, 7, 5, 9. Ignore that 5, I said. So right here, this number up here, this 77,000 one, that doesn't matter. What matters is the remainder at the end which in this case is 4. So x equals 4. We found that by dividing the first 6 by 7 and then taking their remainder. I'm going to knock this down every single time I walk by it. Um, so let's do another. Let's do, let's check if something is a valid check digit. Uh, example, or not if it's a valid check digit, let's check if it's a valid uh, airline ticket number, which I guess is the same as verifying the check digit. Is this a valid airline ticket number? Three, five, two, four, seven, one. Let's do zero. Why not? A check digit can be zero in many of these cases, uh, possibly in all of them. Every case so far, the check digit could have been zero. But what do we do to figure out if this is valid? Well, we look at that number, we divide by seven, we find its remainder, and if the remainder is zero, then that's a valid number. If the remainder is anything else, then it's not valid. So there's a one in seven chance this number I chose is valid. Oh, I just realized all of those numbers are distinct. Everything except, what, 6, 8, 9. So let's divide by 7. I think this is divisible by 7. Wow, I think this is divisible by 7. Why did I think that? Well, 35 is, so we're left with that. Uh, take the 21 off of that, you're left with 2450. 245 is divisible by 7 because it's 210 plus 35, and both of them are divisible by 7. So I think I just picked a number divisible by 7. That's... These numbers I'm saying I'm coming up with randomly are random. This is not anywhere on my notes. Well, let's do it anyway. 5, 35, negative, so you get a 0. I'm not going to write that. You're left with 24, 71, 24, uh, a 3, 21, left with 3, 7, 1, and then that goes in, what, 53 times? So the remainder is 0. So this is a valid number. Interesting. 53, 53, that's another interesting number. That's an interesting example. Um, so you can see that the check digit can be zero. Right here, we have a valid number with, um, <coughs> excuse me, with check digit zero. Now, right here, the first two uh, identification numbers we looked at used a division by nine scheme. This one uses a division by seven scheme. And this 
this method right here with these exa with the uh, uh, seven digits and this setup for the check digit provides more uh, provides a better means of error detection than the two division by nine schemes we already saw. And what does it do? Well, this method detects those errors in transpositions. So I'm going to write that, I'm just going to write a, a bullet point that this detects transposition errors. In other words, if you wrote 5324710 instead, then it would detect that that is not a valid check digit. So this uh, method, you can see, is a little more, uh, well, it's a little better at detecting errors than the first two that we saw.